All right, guys, I'm just taking a little break from the suspension and we are changing the uh, thermostat in this car. As you guys remember from the video when I picked up the car, uh, I drove it back from Chicago and it would never get up to full temperature. Uh, so the heat was never really that hot. So I just wore a jacket on the drive back. But um, that's because the thermostat is probably stuck open. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. I've got a new Mercedes thermostat on the bench over here. Um, these thermostat bolts, you gotta be careful because if you snap, they can snap off in the housing. Now this housing is in amazing condition. I don't see any corrosion. So this one's probably not gonna give us any problems, but you just gotta be careful. They're small 10 millimeter bolts and you don't wanna snap them off. There's two, and this is an aluminum housing. So when I put them back in, I'm gonna use some anti-seize on them so that'll never be a problem. I don't know why the fact here you go guys this is a you don't want to skimp on a thermostat this is the mercedes brand from the dealership 617 200 i don't know why my lighting just went crazy 617 200 1815 uh, and this is just a part you don't want to skimp on just get a quality mercedes part they're not that expensive and there we go you can see the thermostat right there now, around the thermostat, you have the gasket. We'll pull that guy out of here. There we go, that's how it goes in. Let me see if I can show this. So the gasket uh, has a notch in it. There you go, that goes around the lip. See, there's a lip right there on the thermostat. And there's a notch in the gasket, so it goes around the lip. See how that works? So let's put the new one in there. And you just line up, you can see that tab lines up with the tab on the thermostat housing. And then you just screw it back in there. No sealant, no nothing on there. You don't put any sealant. I put a little dab of uh, anti-seize on each of the bolts. So those never get stuck in there. All right, guys, I, I put the bolts in there and basically you don't want to crank these down. Like I said, it's aluminum housing, but you can see there's a gap. You can very see, see the gap? You just want to tighten it down until the gap closes. I mean, it's probably like six foot pounds. And uh, you don't want to go crazy and strip things out. That's it. Like I said, guys, you don't want to go crazy tight and, and mess up your housing. There we go. That's it. I just closed the gap. Now we'll fire it up and probably have to purge a little bit of air out of the system. All right, we've got the system uh, refilled with coolant this is the good stuff you want to use this uh, for Mercedes and uh, we've got the cap off the reservoir just so we can get any air bubbles out if any are trying to get out let's go ahead and check the temperature all right just wanted to show we are perfectly at 80 degrees and we have the perfect idle. Look how smooth, look how smooth this engine is. It's not even rocking at all. That's the uh, breather tube. Look at that. Absolutely outstanding. All right, guys, this is one of those uh, parts of a on the suspension that uh, is a pretty brutal process for how you do this. I'm going to put in the um, control rod bushing. And first, I just want to put some grease in here. That way, next time it needs to be changed, uh, it doesn't corrode and get stuck in here and be a pain in the butt to take out. 
and it also helps with sliding it in there. There we go. So we put some grease in there. And then it goes in there like so. And you have to nail it in there with a, uh, a mallet. There we go. I got it started. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Now we've got a new control rod bushing in there. Beautiful. All right, then it's simple as putting the, uh, so they come with this, this is like a rubber backing piece that presses against there. You snap that in. All right, I got uh, a couple of the bolts loctited and we're just gonna snug. Snug these up here. And then I'm going to get a, a wrench on these. Now these are actual uh, lock nuts here, so you don't need Loctite on those. There is a uh, control rod bushing reinstalled all right so for the ball joint we've got a special tool to do this and we have to do it on the press this is probably my favorite tool in the shop it's a ball joint installer but uh, you can see we have the ball joint there and then we have a little spacer underneath the steering knuckle but this the way this tool is made it's cut out right here so the control arm, I mean the steering knuckle, can actually, since it's curved, see how it curves into the inside of the tool and then comes back out? So that tool can be perfectly vertical on the ball joint. There you go. Let's get a view from back here. There we go. See how the steering knuckle can curve into the tool so it's hollow. So it allows you, so it allows you to do a perfect vertical press onto it because that's a curved steering knuckle. All right, there you go. You can see the splines on the ball joint and we are just going to start pressing that in. You want to check, make sure it's going straight. See, they're already starting to disappear. And it is pressing down into the arm making sure that everything's lined up yep. and this takes a little bit of force you could not do this by hand for sure we do a little bit at the time see it's almost in there and just do it until it seats almost All right, there we go. And, and here you go. You can see that the ball joint is perfectly flush and perfectly in there. So that's how you do it. That tool makes it extremely easy. All right, what we're working with now um, are the tie rods. We gotta get the old tie rod ball joints out of here and the sleeves, the tie rod sleeves or shafts, those are original Mercedes parts and they're really good. Um, I like them better than any aftermarket stuff. So uh, nothing wrong with those. We'll paint those up and clean them up and reuse them. And there we go. There's our uh, brand new replacement ball joint. We'll put some uh, anti-seize in here this time so these aren't so hard to get out. Put a little anti-seize on there before we put this one back in there and that one will be very easy to get out next time alexa volume five there you go look how smooth it goes in when you put that anti-seize on here but we're going to clean this up and paint it nicely 
All right, and there we have the tie rods. They've been painted in the factory original gloss black with the new uh, tie rod ball joints on there. All right, guys, I went ahead and jumped ahead a little bit, but you can see I have the uh, brake control rod housing loosely back in the car, and the rod is actually screwed on, and this rod goes up into the control arm. Now what you wanna do is make sure the hole in the rod is perfectly aligned with the hole on the this puck up here on the top. So, cause your bolt needs to go through there. So we have it aligned. We don't have the, the bolt or the bottom puck back in because first we're gonna go ahead and, and torque this control rod housing up here. And uh, I'm just putting a little Loctite on the bolts before I do that. All right, we'll just snug these guys down. I think they're torqued to like 60 foot pounds. I have to take a look at the torque spec. All right, we got our bushing in there. Put our puck back in there. And then we'll put our bolt back on there. All right. I clearly got to torque all this down, but there is the control rod bushing assembly and uh, back in the car. So next we'll uh, torque these down. I also want to paint the lower control arm, clean that up, and then we'll throw in our uh, steering knuckle. Okay, we just painted the control arm, got that looking nice, uh, and also torqued down these bolts, I think these are, uh, did these 60 foot pounds. Also, I like to hit uh, the um, bushing covers with some nice aluminum paint, so it just makes them look really nice. Totally unnecessary, I'm just OCD like that. And uh, here is the shock spring, per I mean, the not the shock, the spring perch. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up here. And then these are just 13 millimeter bolts that we just run back down in there. And guys, remember, always use uh, Loctite when you're putting the bolts back in. Mercedes did on just about every bolt on the car from the factory. And this is suspension parts. So you don't wanna mess around. You wanna torque everything correctly and Loctite it. These are critical components on the car and uh, you don't wanna mess around and, and have anything come loose. And also, guys, remember, the sign of an amateur mechanic is everything is over torqued. Um, you want to do things by the book. And when you do them by the book, you'll notice that the torque specs, um, uh, you'll, you'll notice that the torque is, is not insanely tight. You don't need to get on there and crank anything down. Uh, a lot, that's a lot of amateur mechanics. They'll get in there and they'll just pull as hard as they can. That's not right. When you over torque something, it can be just as bad as under torquing it. So you want to torque everything to the right spec, which is listed in the factory service manual. Now, I don't have the manual here with me. I've done it so many times. I know what the specs are. But uh, on suspension components especially, it's, it's important to follow the service manual. The next part here is, whoops, is installing our spring. So we left the spring in the uh, spring compressor. So it's exactly how we pulled it out of the car. Now, let me show you um, how it's supposed to be situated. So you'll see right here in the spring perch, see there's a hole right there? Well, that hole is for water to drain out. But you'll see that, there we go, there's a groove that runs around right here, and then there's a stop right there. Well, that's where the bottom of the spring is supposed to line up, the bottom of the coil. And I'll show you guys that. On the bottom, of the spring, see if you guys can see this, it's heavy, um, right there. There's the end of the coil. So the end of that coil sits right there. See, there's a little bump right there. That's where it goes. So to get this back in there, you start with the top, put some weight on this bottom control arm. Okay, we got it started there. Now I'm just gonna push down on it and cram that spring in there. There we go. 
and then I'll turn it a little bit. There we go, perfect. So you can see, see how our coil is lined up with the hole and the end of the uh, spring perch right there. So that spring is back in the car. Now we're not gonna uncompress it yet because we need to put on our uh, spindle. I'm sorry, I call it the spindle. It's the steering knuckle and the spindle's on the end of it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right guys, you remember in order to get that ball joint on, we had to remove the tie rod arm or the, the steering arm that the tie rod connects to right here. Alexa, volume five. So, you definitely want to put Loctite on the bolts. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, that went on there good. Let's torque those guys down. We got to get this steering knuckle back on here. So the first thing you do is just slide the ball joint through the bottom and just put the nut on there to hold it. There we go. Now we need to get it up through the upper uh, <clears throat> upper ball joint. And the way you do that, uh, you have to put a jack under the car, lower the car onto the jack and it'll raise this up over the uh, the ball joint and then you can put a nut on there and then you can decompress your spring uh, of course you need to make sure this is tight and that nut is tight you got to torque them down so let's go ahead and get our jack and do that all right guys you see i have a jack under there we've got everything roughly aligned so now i'm going to go lower the lift and this is kind of tricky you don't want to do it uh, too much or to put too much pressure and it'll pull the car off the actual lift arm and the car will you know start sliding sideways so you got to be careful i got to come check it a couple of times oh we just want to do it enough there we go see how that ball joint is starting to get lined up we just want to lower it enough because uh, if you put too much weight on it, this, this jack will slide up the control arm. You just got to be careful doing this. So I just want this ball joint to stick through there. So I need to lower the lift about another inch. There we go. We got to we can get a nut on there now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. We got that nut there. And we got a nut down there. Now, believe it or not, when you thread a nut the nut only has to for maximum clamping force it has to thread on as much as the 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 bolt is wide so say the bolt is you know a centimeter wide that means the nut needs to thread on one centimeter and that's max clamp force it doesn't even have to be tight but as long as it covers that amount of area you have max clamp force and uh We'll do that with the lower ball joint. We'll get everything tightened up and then we're going to decompress that spring. Now these are tapered. Ball joints are tapered fits. So the torque spec on ball joints, I mean, I think the upper ball joint, I'll have to look this one up. I think it's like maybe 30 foot pounds. It's not crazy. Uh, and the bottom might be 60. Um, again, I'm going to have to look those up. So please don't take my word for that. I, I can't remember what those torque specs are. I have to go get the service manual. All right, so I went ahead, I've already taken the uh, tension off of the spring compressor. Now I just want to pull it out, but that spring is now seated. Spring is now seated back in the car. So I just loosely installed the uh, tie rod and steering arm and these are not torqued down. I'll do that later once I'm finished assembling. One last thing that I do want to do is clean ABS sensor. And we're going to do that with a little bit of acetone. And it'll clean it right up. All right, guys, I just have acetone on a rag. And this is a great cleaning agent. 
There you go, look at that. See how clean it gets that? You gotta clean them or else they'll cause your little light to flicker. There we go. This stuff just makes grease and grime melt away. There we go. Look at that sensor. It's brand new now. Screw back in there, but yeah, now you see how clean that is? That's how you want it to look. Sorry, one last thing we can do over here is reattach, um, reattach our dust shield. Now we can go ahead and reattach our ABS sensor mount right here on the back. You see there's a little tab, a little notch that goes through there that keeps it centered. This bracket, we just reattach that bracket. So there we go. Bunch of nice, clean, new suspension components. Looks really good under here. Now let's... uh. Let's move over to the other side of the car. All right, just giving you guys an update. Uh, started on the other side of the car. Got uh, the suspension painted. That painted where it looks nice. And we're working on uh, cleaning the cross member now. We've got the cross member in here. So we're going to clean up the cross member that connects between the control rod bushing housings. And we're about to press in the ball joint on the driver's side steering knuckle. And we're also going to clean up uh, this dust shield. All right, so we got the driver's side control rod bushing housing, new control rod bushing, tie rod, new ball joint, uh, dust shield, cleaned up the ABS sensor. Got the spring reinstalled and got everything reattached. Got everything reattached over here too on the passenger side. Now we need to go ahead uh, and wait on uh, parts to come in. Bearings, center link, steering shock, and ordered some other stuff. I can't remember. Um, anyway, that's, that's all we can do on the front suspension now. So we're going to go ahead and start doing a service. We'll start with the transmission and the oil. All right, we're going ahead and starting the service. First, we need to drain the transmission fluid. And Mercedes, up under here, we have it. Uh, I went ahead and lined up the torque converter. There is a plug right there, and I've already cracked it loose. You can see it's a little wet, but that allows you to drain the torque converter. So we're going to go ahead and get both of these drained now. That is very red fluid, so obvious this was being maintained. Let's lower this down. Anyway, here is the filter. This is what we're after. We want to get this filter off of here and change that, and that's held in with one, two, three Phillips. Filter is going to come off. Looks really, really good in there. Super clean. Torque converter still draining. There's uh, that pan is super clean. Look how red that is. Super clean. So. We'll get this pan cleaned out when this is uh, done draining and we'll put a fresh um, plug back in there. All right, guys, here's your Mercedes, uh, genuine Mercedes filter, 126-277-0295. And we go ahead and compare that to the other filter to make sure it's identical, and it is. Now, you have a little cork gasket right here and another little cork gasket right there. And those go around this outlet. I think that's the inlet, there's the outlet. It's one or the other, I probably got them backwards. But those little cork gaskets press up into that. So we'll go ahead and put this on now. All 
That torque converter is still draining. It takes a long time. So now let's go clean our pan. All right, here we are at the parts washer and we're just gonna go ahead and take off the old gasket and then put it down in the parts washer and just clean this thing out real quick. Let's clean this out really good or get it dry, dry it off. There we go. Spotless transmission pan. Now we want to put on our genuine Mercedes gasket. And the gasket school has these little clips on both sides here. And those clips will clip over the side of the transmission pan and hold the gasket in place while you install it. Clip right over there like that. All right, now we can go put our pan back on the car. All right, when you put the transmission pan on, you do not want to crank the bolts down. Um, the the gasket will do all the work. You just need to snug, snug everything up. Okay, we have the pan back on and our plug back in the pan and the torque converter. Now it's important that you put a new crush washer in both of these when you install them or else they might leak a little bit. I see a lot of guys put two crush washers on the drain plug and you don't need to put two. It only takes one and the oil filters actually come with two crush washers but you're only supposed to use one of them. All right, while that's draining, we're going to go look at the diff. And I forgot that one of the recent services that the previous owner had was he had new axles installed. Well, to install new axles, you have to remove the diff cover and drain the fluid. So that was already done recently. And uh, so there's no, no need to service the differential on this car. Uh, it's, it's obvious that there's new axles, so it's very obvious that was already done. So we're going to leave that alone. So once this is done, we'll drain the or lower the car and, and go up top and get the filter out. All right, guys, next thing we need to do is install our center link and our steering uh, shock absorber, our steering shock. So we're going to put, we go ahead and put our center link on here. And then our steering shock. goes into the center link like this and attaches, we got that straightened out. So if you guys can see this, it attaches here we go. It attaches right here. So we'll take this bolt out. Mercedes, uh, we got our new center link and our new Bilstein steering shock. So I'm going to go ahead and torque those down, and it's starting to look really nice under here. Uh, next, wheel bearings are coming in. Got to pop those on there and put the rotors and calipers back on. But all these new parts look super nice. And then uh, we also painted our... There it is, our cross member. And there's the nice, freshly painted cross member. So that is going to go back up on the car next. Yep, they're not on both sides. All right, so let's get our uh, wrench and run those down and, and torque them. And there we go. That is a completed rebuilt 
front suspension system. That's how you do it right, folks. So now it's time to install the shocks. There's some Bilstein shocks and the wheel bearings came in. So we're gonna put in the new wheel bearings. Here are the new Bilstein shocks and it's important to order the HD or the heavy duty shock. Otherwise, the car is gonna have too much body roll. I'm pretty sure from the factory, the HD shock is closer to what Mercedes originally used because I've tried the, the recommended or regular shock by Bilstein and there's way too much body roll and they're not stiff enough. But uh, these HD shocks, there you go, there's the part numbers. There's the front and here's the rear. Those uh, provide the closest to factory original ride. Um, so that's why I use these. Anyway, let's go ahead and get these guys installed. Okay, we have our cleaned up shock covers and here's all the hardware. They give you two uh, mounting bolts. Now, we're gonna take our bump stop Go ahead and put that over the shock. There we go. We'll put this one over here. And then we're gonna put our plate. Goes over right there. And then we'll put our shock tube and our bushing there we go and then these are ready to go up in the car so let's go ahead and get these installed all right guys you can see i have the wheel turned all the way and there's the two shock mounting holes on the control arm and then you see up top there, there's the hole where the shock goes through the fender. So what we're going to do is just put, loosely put one of the bolts right here, or 10 millimeter. And uh, Bilstein includes Loctite on them from the factory, so you don't have to put any more on there. And there's some little lock washers. So we'll try to get that threaded there. All right, we'll snug that up in a second. So once you have that first one there, you compress the shock and you pull it forward. Then that gives you access to the one in the back. And we'll get the one in the front. And then I'll torque it down with a regular wrench. All right, there we go. Now we need to go up top and put, there we go, and put the nuts on the top of the shock uh, shaft. But before we do that, we're gonna need to put some weight on the car. So uh, we need to put the wheels, um, we need to put the uh, new bearings and hubs and wheels back on the car that way we can lower the car put some weight on it and then that'll make the that'll make the shaft go all the way up through the body and then we can screw the nuts on there all right now we're going to move to the uh, rear shock and you'll see there's a little snap ring right here and that snap ring so we can put that plate over and then our bushing now let's go ahead and put this up through the rear of the car. All right. Then this shock just slides right up and into the hole inside behind the back seat. And Bilstein 
include some lock washers and some fresh hardware. So we'll go ahead and get that started. There we go. And now we'll do the other side, then we'll go inside the car and put the nut on the top and the bush, uh, bushing on the top and the nut on the top. All right, our SKF bearing set has come in and the rotors on this car are excellent. Uh, no reason to change the rotors. The brake pads are also brand new. But what I want to change is the, I guess, 35 year old bearing. And there's also, Right here, there's a bearing in the back, and this is the this is the outer bearing, that's the inner bearing. So we have to pop out this seal to get that inner bearing out, and then we want to clean out all the old grease and pack new grease into the bearing. Uh, into the bearings. Now the kit comes with the inner bearing, the outer bearing, uh, the, the new dust cover or dust shield that goes on the back. This is the outer bearing uh, cover, grease cover, grease cap, and that's a new bolt for our spindle, uh, spindle nut. And this is a little radio interference copper tab that plugs into the end of the wheel. Um, I don't even know if those things actually do anything, but Mercedes wants them on there, so we put them on there. So let's go ahead and uh, pop out the seal and, and uh, pack our new bearings and reinstall the seal. All right, so this is how you get uh, the seal out. This is a seal puller, and I've already started it, but you basically put it around the seal. I hit it a couple of times before I started recording, and that will pull the old seal out, and then you can access that old bearing. And uh, we're gonna go ahead, replace those. First, we're gonna clean all this old grease out of the hub and pack in fresh grease and fresh new bearings. All right, just more parts washer activities. We're gonna clean out all this old grease in here and get some fresh wheel bearing grease packed in here. There we go, that is now a clean hub and that way we can uh, put in our new bearings. Now it's also good to inspect the bearing race because the kit comes with a bearing race. And so this is the race that's pressed in there. And I've inspected these races and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They're in extremely good condition. So there's no reason to hammer out the race and replace the race. All right, I'll just show how to pack one of these bearings uh, this is Tempkin uh, wheel bearing grease, and we'll just take the rear bearing, get a glob of this grease in your hand, and just keep doing that, and you pack it all down, flipping the bearing over. All right, we have some packed bearings. Okay, we're ready to put in our inner bearing, and you can see I've just packed some grease uh, down in there, and I just take a brush and, you know, brush around the race, but we can take our bearing, and it only goes in one way, you can't mess it up, and you just set it in there like that. And now your seal, it only goes in one way, you can't mess it up. Your seal goes over the back here. Uh, this is a socket. It is a two inch, let's see, a two inch socket fits perfectly um, over the rear seal. Almost. A 
little bit more. Almost there. We just want to drive it home. There we go. And now we have our seal. And this seal right here is what rides on the spindle. So we're going to go ahead and knock out the other side, then put these back on the car. All right, once you get the bearings and seals on, you just line them up. And stick it right on there. Now we're going to clean all the grease off here, of course, with brake cleaner. And you want to get the threads cleaned up real good because we're going to put the spindle nut on there. All right, the spindle nut. It's got a flat side on the back. And it's made to go on by hand. See, it's not shaped like any wrench. So we'll just get it started here. And they want you to hand tighten it um, just where you take the play. Y'all have seen this in my other videos, but just where you get the play out of the bearings. See, for example, see there's play in the bearings. So I keep tightening. Yep, that's it. Little there, a little bit more. Here we go. There's no play in the bearing. I can back it off a little bit. See, there's play in the bearing. Just want to go where there's no play. There you go. And then you got to tighten the, the locking uh, screw down with the with an Allen. Uh, you got to put the dust cap back on. Now the dust cap, Mercedes says, put a little grease down in the dust cap. Doesn't take much. Oh, actually, before the dust cap goes on, we're going to put in a little rate copper radio interference pin that goes right there. So let me go get that. Here it is right here. This just goes into the end. There you go. Simple as that. Now I like to reuse. I like to reuse the original Mercedes dust cap. The aftermarket ones they look the same, but they never quite fit right. Let's see. But these original ones, yeah, I'm using the original. It's in great condition, and they fit much better. And there you go. That is completed. Let's go do it on the other side. We have the hubs and rotors back on both sides of the car. Now I just want to clean any grease off there with some brake cleaner. And there we go. Ready to put the caliper back on. Okay, I just took the calipers down and I loosely put them on there. And now, and now we got to come back here and put those two caliper bolts in on each side. You got to make sure you use Loctite on them. All right, this is going to wrap it up for the suspension. Uh, rotors, hubs, everything's back on. Brakes are torqued down. And we're going to go back up top side now and finish doing the uh, nut on the top of the front shock and the rear shock. All right, we have the wheels back on the car so we can put it down on the ground and get the shocks tightened. And let me show you why we have to put it on the ground. See right there, there's the top of the shock. And we put the bushing on, you can see the top of the shock doesn't come all the way through the bushing so we can't get a, net, a nut on there. There we go we have room to get our nut on the top of the shock. So first we want to put our metal plate on there. That goes around the bushing. And then we'll put our nut on the top. So I'm just going to loosely put it on here and then we're going to go the other side and put it on over here. This side, see how much farther it sticks through now? All 
All right, now let's go look at the back of the car. So remember we had to take the back seat out. And there we go. See what's sticking through there. So I'll put our pieces right back here. There's our new bushing. Put that there. Put our plate on it. And same as the front of the car. All right, guys, by holding a, uh, basically you hold a, screwdriver in the slot on top like that and you hold the shock shaft still while using a wrench to manually tighten it down and you uh just go in there and snug up the bushing there we go this is the guy i use this works well so You basically get that sized on there like that. So you can hold it vertical like that. And then you get your wrench and tighten her down. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't know if you guys can see this, but once you get your wrench in the right spot, you can start moving pretty quick. Forgot to record when I was taking the oil filter out so you missed that part but uh we always i'm using rotella 15w40 that's the good stuff i use it in all the cars so let's go ahead and fill this car back up and then we'll also uh fill up the uh, transmission fluid all right so we're filling up the uh, transmission and you have to put in uh, atf the dex merc Basically, it is, uh, there you go, Dexron, Dexron 3. That's the stuff you use. And it takes, I mean, somewhere around five quarts. Basically, you put in like four quarts, maybe close to five, and then you have to drive it just a little bit, you know, back it in and out of the shop, get the fluid to move through there, and then see if you have to add some. Then take it out and get everything hot and up to temperature and then come back and while the car is running and then idle i mean in park you got to check it again you know i have to top it off a little bit um so it's a little tricky it's not the same as putting oil in the car um engine oil you have to uh get everything up to operating temperature and then check it so let's just go ahead and put in these uh we'll go ahead and put in five uh four quarts now and then uh we'll see where it's at all right, guys, so that's going to finish this video. We have the shocks on front and rear. The front suspension is completely rebuilt. We have the fuel sending unit removed because it was uh, it was actually broken and not repairable. I've got a new one that should be here tomorrow. And then we're going to do the air cleaner mounts and the uh, we'll do the air cleaner mounts and the fuel sender in the next video. But so that that's going to conclude this video. Um, this is basically uh a two-part series. The last video in this video, the last video was taking apart all the suspension. This video was putting it all back together. And uh, we have a little ways to go on this car. Um, next, we're going to move, once we do the fuel sender and the air cleaner, we'll move to the interior, start checking out all the controls, making sure the climate control works correctly, all the windows, the sunroof, you know, the process that I go through. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please uh, subscribe and leave me some comments and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.